Hey guys, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. We have six questions that we want to cover. Question number one is about proxies. Question number two is about how to put files from DaVinci into LumaFusion, because last Friday I explained how you can have an XML file from LumaFusion and put it into DaVinci Resolve. So if you don't know how to do this, watch the last Q&A Friday's video. And then someone is asking, are you using LumaFusion or not? We will answer that important question today. And then we also plan a tracker for Fusion. How does it work? Is it actually even working we will talk about this and then what about text can you actually change shadows outline and all those kind of things I will go over that as well because yesterday I made a video and I showed you how you can do the right on screen effect with DaVinci Resolve and the last question is basically I did a couple of different video courses in my past and also the masterclass is hosted on an amazing platform at the moment so I will talk about this a little bit in, in the end can we have proxies on DaVinci Resolve on the iPad Yes and no. So if you try to create proxies on your uh, iPad, it will give an error and it will not work. And this is for the current version, 18.5. It could be that with the next version, this issue is not uh, there anymore and it works just how it should be. But it is capable of handling proxy files. So what does it mean? You can take your footage and bring it into the Mac on your desktop, your laptop, whatever, and create the proxies. And then I would recommend that you have a workflow just working on your SSD drive that I had talked about in my last Q&A as well. And in our masterclass for DaVinci Resolve, we talk about how to set this all up, right? This is very important. I suggest, especially like you have 128 gigabytes, that's not enough, especially if you work with 4K material, you will run into internal storage issues a lot. And that could be one problem of your speed problems, but because he was asking those two questions, is it possible proxies, but also he has problems with his M1 128 gigabytes and he uses Sony S A7 III 4K. I don't have, oh yeah, to answer the question, you take everything to the external storage SSD and you bring it into the iPad. And then if you open the project with proxy files, it will know the proxy files and it can work with the proxy files, but it can't create them. I haven't tested A7 III 4K material, but from my experience, the M1 should be capable of running 4K material, no problem. My Canon 4K and even RAW, no problem at all. And also you could test Final Cut Pro, open it up and see if you can run the 4K material there because then you know, okay, it's it's not just overall, if it's running in Final Cut Pro, which can handle 4K material as well. Not as smooth as um, DaVinci. In DaVinci, the material normally works better than in Final Cut Pro. I had some legs in Final Cut Pro already, but you could test that. And I have a video on my channel, this one here. Do this to make DaVinci Resolve faster instead of rage smashing your iPad. In this video, I go over a couple of different settings that you can take and to maybe improve your speed and the cache and everything. So definitely watch that video. And then you also were asking, and basically you answered me that question already in your, in your question. Your external monitor, you can only mirror. It's not working that you can have it, uh, the, video feed, the video clean feed out there. And so, yeah, that's very simple. I have a video on external monitor, this one here. Watch this one. But the basic answer is you need the studio version. For the clean feed out, that's a studio only feature. So you can't use it in the free version. Next question, how again can I put DaVinci projects into LumaFusion? Because last Friday we talked about how to create an XML file in LumaFusion and bring it into DaVinci Resolve. So I looked into this a couple of different ways and looked at the website, looked at different forums and everything. I couldn't figure it out. There is no function to my awareness that you can do it the opposite way. LumaFusion can't access XML files. That's a shame because you pay for that feature with XMLs. And I would hope that if you have that feature that you at least can bring it back. Like let's say I forgot that to save it in another different project file, right? And I just want to bring it back. It's not possible, not to my awareness. If you found a different way, please let me know in the comments. Then the most important question, are you using LumaFusion or not? <laughs> okay, since I have DaVinci Resolve, I edit most of my videos in DaVinci Resolve. And one main reason, if you are part of the students of my masterclass, you will know that I became one of the fastest video editors because the way I use my keyboard shortcuts. And I, I still believe the combination of keyboard shortcuts and the pencil is what makes this. I'm so much faster than even on my desktop because of that. I don't need a, need a speed editor to be as fast. And so what does it mean? DaVinci Resolve, you can change the keyboard shortcuts. LumaFusion, you can't. At least the last time I checked it, you can't. So since the beginning when I was using LumaFusion, I didn't like that I had to use the LumaFusion the way it is. That's also the reason why I bought this cover here 
on my iPad, which is nice. I like the cover so I can use the keyboard shortcuts from LumaFusion, but I was never as fast. So why am I talking so long about this question? I still lose, use LumaFusion for one particular reason. DaVinci Resolve at the current moment with the version that we have right now, it could be changed next version. I can't create MP3 files audio files. So if I make my podcast and I need a video file and an MP3 file, and I don't want to open any different software and I want to do it straight on my iPad, I bring my video file from DaVinci Resolve into LumaFusion, the video file, not the export thing, the video file, and I export just the audio file. And I do this with LumaFusion. And for example, I made a video where I talked about how Logic just destroyed DaVinci and Final Cut Pro. And in this video, I talked about the capabilities of using AV, AUV3 plugins. Those are plugins for music editing and stuff. I'm not using this, but if you want, LumaFusion is capable of running those external Lum, uh, AUV3 plugins. So what does it mean? If you want to master, and for example, DaVinci Resolve at the moment is still limited and Final Cut as well, but if you want to master on your iPad, then LumaFusion is currently better if you use those external plugins and you got great, great ones than the other two softwares, or you use Logic, of course. Plan Tracker, I was playing around with this a lot. So the Plan Tracker thing is basically what you're supposed to do is you have a video like this and it's moving and here the mountains are moving in the background because the camera is moving. You can go to Fusion and you can actually, if you click this one here and you hit Shift and Spacebar and you look for the tracker, there is the Planar Tracker, well, here, Planar Tracker. I can add this into here. And with the planar tracker, that's the, the idea, I can now mark where I want to, whatever, like this now, I can mark where it should track. But what I can't get to work on my iPad is the tracking itself. So it's not crashing anymore. I remember a couple of versions before, every time when I just hit now here tracking, it was crashing, it wasn't working. At least I can click this but it's just not doing anything. doesn't matter what kind of settings. So I couldn't make it work on my machine so far. That could change with the next version. But guys, never forget, I, I told this now in a couple of comments, people are complaining that the pages are not working who are not officially launched. Currently, we only have cut and color. So Fusion, for example, a couple of things work, a couple of things still don't work. There's a reason why they don't have launched this officially. So I feel when we when something works, that's amazing, but you always have to think about it, that's a bonus. So if the tracking, of course, it's an important feature, don't get me wrong, but if it's not working right now, we shouldn't be like angry about this because it is not officially launched. If you can make it run and it work with it, that's amazing, but it's not officially there. I just want to remind you about that. Can you edit actual text, like editing drop shadows and everything? Yeah, so for that, I would say, it for me, it seems like you're a very beginner, basics. If you are like him and you don't even know all of those basics, this is why we created the masterclass for DaVinci Resolve from beginner to pro. You will learn all of those basic stuff that you understand where to look because, you know, DaVinci is powerful. There's so many features. I could continue for the next five years and every day make a video and I find something that I can explain you. Probably will do, maybe, we'll see. But anyway, the point is, it is very like, you can go very deep with DaVinci Resolve and this is why it's also overwhelming. But at the same time, if you have a basic understanding of a lot of things, then you know how to do them. So I don't wanna let you go completely off here, but if we go here into the cut page and we go here to the titles, you have different types of titles, right? You have the normal title and you have the title plus. Title plus, the plus means that you have more settings to play around. So if you wanna do those kind of things that you were talking about, I would import a title plus Ignore that one, this was my playing around with Fusion, which didn't work, but we have now here this custom title. I go to the inspector, and now here, if you wanna change size, color, all of this is already here. And with the text plus, you even have more settings here, for example, layout, transform, shading. If you wanna shade it, there it is image settings and a lot. Just go over that and you will find what you're searching for. Can you tell me the name of the video editing course that you uh, had before? Yeah, so very simple. I took the course from Paco Warbeck and his brothers. It's called Full Time Filmmaker. They also have like they also have this like funnel, right? You start as a filmmaker, you want to become a filmmaker, so they have a course called Full Time Filmmaker. 
Then they have a course, it's called Course Creator Pro, where you, learn, where you learn all the steps how to create a course. So even if I have never created a massive course like Da Vinci before, I knew how to do it because I, for like two years ago, I learned a lot in that course. And one day I knew I want to create a course and then the opportunity with Da Vinci came and I just jumped on, on it, right? And then the third letter, if you go through those steps, you don't have to do it, of course, but this is like, this was my way. I joined Full-Time Filmmaker, then I went into Course Creator Pro. And now, since I have proof of concept that my masterclass is actually selling, because those kind of platforms can be expensive, I use Teachable first because Teachable was cheaper, but Teachable also changed their pricing structure and what they offer. So they gave less and charged more. And I already reached the capacity of the, uh, the freer plans. And so I don't know how much understanding of business you have, but if you really build a business like an online course or something, then something like Course Creator 360 could be interesting. Why? Because with that, you can create your own websites, you can create your landing pages, like where the people come and click through. You can create your email marketing because that's very important. If you want to build a business, you want to collect the emails because then you can keep in contact. If you have a new pro, like let's say very simple. It's not about being spammy, right? It's about, let's say in, in four months or so, I create another transition pack or something very important for Da Vinci. That is interesting for you if you're a Da Vinci user, right? If you only rely on YouTube and um, the social media platforms, you can create content, but only five to 10% of the people will actually see it from your followers. So you can never reach all of them at once if you have something interesting new. That can be a video, that can be a product. So, but if the people like it, you can reach them via email. They can still decide if they want to click it or not, but at least they see, oh yeah, then you came out with a new transition pack. That's cool, I got the first one. What is the second one? Yeah, that's amazing, I was waiting for that, you know? This is why you want to collect emails and then there's a lot of business stuff that you can do. So my recommendation is if you're planning to do an online course, because now with DaVinci you have the skills, my course is completely built on an iPad. So this shouldn't be the limitation anymore. You don't need a laptop or whatever. You can create a course, help other people with your course and you can do everything on the iPad. And so Course Creator Pro is just amazing for that. You can start there. You don't have to have any knowledge. They have a bootcamp. They, take you from step one. It takes time, okay? But it, they take you from step day one and they teach you everything. Anyway, that's it for this week's Friday Q&A. We will keep this format going. Every Friday I will answer your guys' questions. So please let me know the questions that you have under those videos. And then next week, Friday, we will answer them. I hope to see you soon. I wish you an amazing week and see you. I'm Daniel. Bye.